say it's it's the deaf and dumb spirit now when you hear that it's probably not what you think it is okay when you just think of deaf and dumb someone who cannot hear someone who cannot speak uh, but it takes on many more characteristics than that uh, we're going to go to mark chapter 9 this is in scripture the story where this spirit is identified that jesus identifies mark chapter 9 and uh beginning in verse 14 Bible says when he came to his disciples he saw a great multitude around them scribes disputing with them immediately when he saw them all the people were greatly amazed running to him greeted him he asked the scribes what are you discussing with them then one of the crowd answered and said teacher I brought you my son who uh, who has a mute spirit and wherever it seizes him it throws him down he foams at the mouth gnashes his teeth becomes rigid so I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He, Jesus, answered and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. And they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him. He fell down on the ground, wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked his father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, this is the plea of, his, of the Father here. If you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, to the Father, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. And immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people were come, came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, and he said to it, here he identifies it, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. The spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, came out of him, and he became as one dead, so that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up. He arose, and when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Amen. So this morning, as we discuss this, this spirit that is identified as a deaf and dumb spirit, uh, we talked last week about the spirit of infirmity. Uh, spirit of infirmity. Um, there are similarities between these two, uh, but... This particular uh, demonic uh, deaf and dumb spirit, it is something quite different, although there are similarities. Okay, uh, Infirmity is diseases, it's sickness, it's weakness, uh, whereas the deaf and dumb spirit, to, to really understand the role of, of, of this, you have to take a, a look at what we just read. Uh, this is the story of the, uh, in which this spirit was first um, identified. Um, in our reading this morning, the father describes the symptoms of his son who, who, who is possessed by this spirit. Uh, what would seem to be, the symptoms would seem to be what, what, what seizures are. Uh, verse 18, when it, and when, wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast him out, but they could not. He told how this demonic spirit, it, would, it tore his son. That word tore means that, that it, it dashed him or it caused him to thrash about uncontrollably. Um, back in January when my wife and I were in Dominican Republic and we were at a children's uh, service, the whole, the whole mission trip was, was focused on children. And we were out in this village out there, uh, forget the name of the village but basically what seemed to be in the middle of nowhere and we were in this small building and uh, people just we had it in the afternoon it was after school had let out and there in the Dominican Republic not not a lot of people have vehicles but they have cars but they have motorcycles and we watched as as they drove up on these small dirt bike motorcycles and you'd have three four five people on one motorcycle and they just kept bringing these kids in. And before we, you realized that it was, we had like, I think, 150 people roughly in this small, small building. 
mostly children and and we watched as as the children's service began and of course you know there was worship and and down there everything is loud i mean the services are just ear drum busting loud crazy makes our church sound very very quiet trust me and uh, anyway I, I remember as 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 the spirit of the lord began to move and towards the end of the service the altar call and then the, the all these children just flooded the altar and uh, people are being you know uh, all the ministry there, there we're praying for these kids and we're watching as God is touching he's filling kids with the Holy Ghost but there's this one particular girl that that I, I watched and, and she seemed like she was unmoved un, untouched no response at all and uh, before long this is the one that we, and we talked about that uh, in, in something that I, I, I was not anticipating wasn't expecting but before before that was all said and done this, this young girl I think her name was Layla ends up on the ground doing what this the scripture here is describing his son because uh, when when we did go or when, when they went to go pray for her she just fell flat on her back started thrashing started started doing again kind of seizing foaming i mean it was something i i personally had not witnessed that that dramatic and uh before it's all said and done uh thankfully uh, I, I was able, and we were able to witness as God delivered this girl uh, from the Spirit. How many believe that, again, I'm, I'm not looking around every corner trying to find a demon, but I'm, I, do, I do understand demon possession does exist, and I do know, amen, that you and I, we have the power to cast that spirit out, amen? And so witnessing this and then reading this and realizing that, that this, this, again, when it says that, that it, it tore him, that it it dashed him. It caused him to to thrash again uncontrollably. Uh, the, the, the father described how again his son would would fall to the ground, foam at the mouth, gnash his teeth, and in the uh, in the aftermath of these uh, seizure type episodes, his son would would then would would pine away, which which that means that he was he would be drained of of all his strength incapable of, of moving and again this this young girl she was she was about eight nine years old and and she would she would just she would be on on the ground on her back she would arch her back she if, if we weren't there she, she would I mean she would have banged her head against the floor but but people were there to kind of help shield that and uh, when it was all said and done she, she did just as as the scripture says she just kind of she laid there my wife was there my wife got a hold of her and wouldn't let her go and and uh and then when it was all done she did she had no strength at all but uh so so again I, I i can i can relate to this reading to say that i i've seen something very similar to this and uh his uh, uh, jesus asked his father how long has this been has this been happening how long has this uh uh been 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 taking place and uh, and so it, again uh as often as he thrown him uh, into the fire, he said it happened since he was a child. So it's it's as though uh, his father was saying it's as though this this spirit is is trying to destroy my son. And eventually, Jesus he turns to the son and how he identifies the spirit. Verse twenty five, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, "Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, uh, come out of him and enter him no more." Uh, the demonic spirit he manifested itself as before, cried out, tearing at the man. Uh, ultimately, though he was de- he was departing, but leaving this man so weak, the Bible again describes him as being like uh, one that's dead. Uh, I-, I want to I want to a- a- acknowledge here today that, and some may would disagree uh, with this, uh, but I I am I'm convinced uh, from reading this book and and reading scripture here that a deaf and dumb spirit again one when you hear that you're thinking someone that just cannot hear or someone that cannot speak but but the a deaf and dumb spirit it's it's a demonic spirit that strives to cause accidents or harmful episodes in one's life um the bible this biblical account reveals a lot about it it caused him to fall into the fire uh bringing about him about his fall into water uh, cast him violently to the ground uncontrollable reactions resembling again seizures foaming at the mouth gnashing and grinding his teeth feigning type responses in that description jesus identifies this deaf and dumb spirit as being associated with 
uh, these physical episodes, falling, biting, being shoved, uh, tearing, seizing, choking, weakness. And, uh, and so, again, I, I want us to understand, I want to clarify that I'm not saying that all accidents are caused by demonic spirits. Okay, please, please hear me. It seems like sometimes when, when, when someone speaks, we take them to, to either extremes. I'm not saying that all accidents are caused by a demonic spirit, but I am uh, acknowledging, again, that all humanity has the potential to slip, to fall, to injure themselves, uh, to have any other number of accidents. But some things happen simply because we are human. And, 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 and we all can say amen. Uh, amen. When it comes to we, we have accidents, things, life just happens. But again, in light of God's word, uh, we, I think we should acknowledge there are other accidents that are uh, the result of a deaf and dumb spirit. Uh, for instance, if, if I, I, I've got a, a, a friend, it's, it's, a, it's a distant friend, not, not close friend, but just within the last uh, week, this particular person, uh, people connected to their family, one, uh, their their mother was uh, uh, had muriatic acid blow up in her face and uh, uh, had to be flown out life flighted. She's okay, thankfully. Nothing nothing was major, but but potentially there. Uh, and then just maybe two days later, her oldest son uh, flips and rolls his jeep like three or four times. Again, thankfully nobody was injured. Okay. Now, some would say, well, that's just coincidence. And it could be. It could be. But when I see things like that are, that are happening kind of back to back, again, it could be coincidence. And again, you're, you know me. I'm not one of these that's always looking around the corner looking for a devil. But there could be an indication that that could be a deaf and dumb spirit uh, affecting. Uh, anybody here would consider yourself accident prone? Again, I'm not gonna. I'm not blaming everything on the devil, okay? But there are things. I think we. I think we need to scripturally acknowledge that. Hey, that is that is a possibility. So, again, each week we we give out these manifestations of of these spirits, and and by no means are these saying that every accident is caused by by this. But accidents, accident prone, uh, you know, all different types of accidents. All of those can say that those can be p potential symptoms of a deaf and dumb spirit. Again, one may wonder why why it's it is uh, why it's called uh, the deaf and dumb spirit. It's been given this, in, in my opinion, this unique term because it's designed to inhibit a person's natural ability to be cautious, to be apprehensive. Uh, it cannot begin to recall them uh, or, or myself how many times. Uh, you know, I have stood in, in whether it be hospital emergency rooms, uh, uh, in homes where, where, pe where tragedies just happened or even scenes where accidents had taken place. And, and, I, and I've heard people say, make these kind of statements like, well, I, I didn't see a thing or, or I, I didn't hear it coming or uh, I was so shocked I, I, I just wasn't able to say a word or I, I never saw anything out of the door. I mean, just like this happened. And, and again, that's how accidents happen. But, but possibly, and again, what I'm, what I'm projecting, the, the, the possibility is that this spirit has the ability to, to distract or, or uh, inhibit your, uh, your natural ability to be cautious and to hear and perhaps to see. So, um, uh, I mean, how many times have, 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 have you or, or someone that you know, have, have you ever been like, uh, just been given this 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 awareness of something of some kind of impending danger. I know I know I'm sounding crazy. Okay, please don't 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 cut me off. This brother Wells is getting crazy here, but but this is real stuff. Have you ever just felt this 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 urge to to pray and not really have a particular reason? You don't you don't know anything, but you just have this you have this this awareness of of some sort of, of danger that, that might be in motion. I, I, I've been there uh, where, where I just, I, I felt this, and I felt a need to pray and, and not even, not know who I'm praying for, what I'm praying for, 
But later on, you, you hear that such and such happened to so-and-so, and, and then you maybe make the connection, well, okay, maybe, that was, maybe that's what God was, was, was urging me to pray for that in that moment. I, I think it's good to be, to be available. Amen? I, I've heard stories, and I'll be honest with you, this doesn't happen to me very often. I don't know why. I'm not complaining. God has always let me sleep well. <laughs> so I don't, I don't get woken up very often. Uh, it has happened occasionally, but very, and, and it may change tonight. Well, that, that's fine. But my wife, on the other hand, uh, I mean, there she, she she is many times in the middle of the night. She is uh, she is woken up and uh, with an urgency to pray. I will never forget. It's been a several years ago. She has a she had an uncle who he passed away. He had been away from God for for many 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 years. He lived in a in a homosexual lifestyle. Uh, and again, uh, close to the family, we, we, we loved her uncle, uh, but he, he had, uh, hadn't seen him much. He lived out of state. And I will never forget, it was in the middle of the night. I wasn't aware. I was still sleeping. But, but by morning, she shared the story. But that, that night, God woke her up, and uh, she went to pray and interceding for her uncle, having no idea what was going on, didn't know what, what was happening, and, uh, but her uncle had had a heart attack. And uh, found out that morning that that uh, he had had a, a massive heart attack, and uh, God had shook my or woke my my wife to pray for. Her. Again, I appreciate people that that will allow that to happen. Amen. If you ever have an urgency to pray, don't 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 turn that off. Don't don't say, well, I'll get to it when I wake up, or I'll get to it when it's more of a convenient time. But we need to make sure that we are available for that, because again. You know, we got to consider what would have happened if we had not prayed. What would have happened if someone that, that, that God had put, brought this awareness to them, uh, you know, again, we, we oftentimes we, 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 we may be at risk for being considered to be a, a kind of a fool for, for thinking this kind of stuff, or uh, rather than having you, you know, maybe credibility being asked the most pressing question again, which is what would have happened had you not pray we all face here this morning all of us potential for accidents we we, we face potential for tragedies i i know that you know any time that we're going on a trip uh you know we'll always whether we're in a in the vehicle or in an airplane or we're at we'll, we'll we'll join hands and and we'll we'll plead the blood of jesus over us as we travel uh for for god to keep his hand on us and i think that's well ordered right uh, but but again, there's potential. We don't we don't know. I mean, we're we're, we're hoping, we're believing, we're we're trusting God. Uh, but we there again, we all face the potential for accidents. Most of us are familiar with again someone that that may be overly accident prone. Uh, you know, potentially, possibly they're battling this deaf and dumb spirit. So if you're if you're having things happen on a, on a continual basis, again, not not to paranoia anybody but i think it's something to, to consider that you know what maybe maybe i need to direct my prayers more more specifically god bind this deaf and dumb spirit amen because again i i uh, we have we have that within us the power to do so um so how do we how again we, we each week we uh we share kind of some steps as to how to handle or how to combat uh number one step number one as we've already mentioned, when you feel an urgency to pray, you need to pray urgently. Amen. Um, and I know we got so much going on. We got so many voices into our in our in our lives where we're, we got so many things combating for our attention. But I pray that we never lose the ability, uh, the the awareness to say, God, at any time that you want to Im impress upon me or urge me i i want to be available i want to be ready so again when you feel an urgency to pray you need to pray urgently uh the fact is further strengthened when we understand that jesus says something rather unique about this uh this particular spirit he didn't say he didn't say this regarding any other demonic spirit in the entire bible but after he cast out the deaf and dumb spirit it was this spirit that jesus said in mark 9 and 29 this kind of came out by nothing but prayer and fasting now again uh I, I'm, I'm not wanting to to speculate or bring paranoia but could it be perhaps 
that we aren't as spiritually attuned as we have been or need to be therefore we're not hearing the urgency to pray like we should amen therefore we're 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 you know that we're just kind of well that's just that's just life that's just things that happen there could be a a more deeper layer spiritually that's there that we're not aware because what does fasting do fasting doesn't make god bigger okay god is just as big and powerful as he's ever been but fasting changes my perception of him it it, it brings my flesh into subjection it helps me to have a a clearer view of of the of things that are on a spiritual realm um I was, I was talking to Brother Burns before service. We, we were talking about the scripture where if, you know, we have a tendency to want to take the, the speck out of our, our brother's eye. But Jesus said, for you to do that, now, he said, you need to make sure you get rid of the log out of your eye. And, and, that, and, and then the Bible says, when you take the beam out of your eye, that you may be able to see. The thing is, my perception is what? My reality. I cannot alter your perception because that's your perception. But I can get rid of the log out of my own eye so that I can clearly see to help my brother. Perhaps. So again, I want to be, be aware of the things that are out there. I want to be spiritually attuned. And if God calls me to, to, to pray for somebody in the middle of the night, I want to be available for that. I want to hear that voice, amen, for prayer. And again, there are so many stories I, I've read. I, I, I love, they're, they're inspiring, where I've read stories where, where people are woken up or, or in the middle of the day, God just, you know, puts, a, puts an awareness, an urgency, and they pray, and then you hear the stories of where God intervened. I want to I be a part of that. And for, for that to happen, again, prayer and fasting is, well, without question, it is key. Uh, the second step uh, main, maintain awareness and awareness of the spiritual realm around you and I, I know that goes without saying but it's so easy to just you know we, we see what we see we, we live in the natural so we, we, we you know it's easy just to stay there uh, we walk by faith the Bible says not by, by sight Paul said while we look not at the things which are seen but the things which are not seen um, not, not every accident is demonically caused all right but some things do happen just because uh, it is part of an active, a, a constant moving life. Um, however, to know the, the difference between accidents caused by, by life and accidents caused by demonic influence, again, a very healthy spiritual discernment is needed. Uh, with a heart that is pure towards God, consistently making it a point to be aware of the spiritual world around you. We've got to understand and remember that while our flesh is breathing air, our flesh is pumping blood, the spiritual realm around us is just as real. It's not as tangible. You can't necessarily reach out and grab it. You don't get to necessarily see it, but, but it's just as real as what you see in the natural. Amen? Uh, and making sure that your spirit is aware of what is going on in the spiritual atmosphere around it is extremely important. Uh, to truly operate in spiritual warfare. Um, this need is re re reinforced by the Apostle John in 1 John chapter 4. He said, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. That word try, it means to learn, to try to learn uh, the genuineness of something by examination <clears throat> and testing, to test or to examine. So, again, I, 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 I want to have, I yearn for, uh, I want to have that discernment. Amen. Um, one translation says to carefully weigh and examine. I want to carefully weigh and examine. Amen. The spirits that are around me. So, again, give me, give me eyes to see, Lord. Give me ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to, to believe. Amen. I want to, I want to walk after his spirit. Um, the third step is to trust those with spiritual discernment. I'm very, very careful on what voices I allow to speak into my life. I don't listen to everybody that talks to me. I don't. Uh, I'm, very, I'm very careful. But I do have those that, that have, have proven to me that they're very spiritually discerning. 
And so those, I, uh, I, I trust their words. I've got, a, I've got a gentleman right now. I don't, I don't, I'm, we're friends, but we're not close. But I, I know his walk with God. And if he were to call me today <clears throat> and tell me, hey, I, 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 I felt this in prayer, I, I saw this in prayer, I, I'm going to believe what he tells me. Because number one, he, he don't call me very often, hardly ever. But if it is from God, I, I, I'm going to trust that he, he has that discernment. So we need to trust those uh, that have spiritual discernment. Um, again, I'm not talking about being hypersensitive, magnifying things that aren't remotely spiritually based, not those who delight in seeing demons around every corner. That's not the case at all. But people who have enough depth in their walk with God that have <clears throat> enough love uh, for your soul to warn you of things that they may feel are coming your way. Again, those voices are, 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 are minimal. They're, they're, not, they're, not, they're not a continual voice, but they, are, they do come around. People who possess enough spiritual discernment to recognize unholy spirits like a deaf and dumb spirit at work. I want to surround myself with righteous people whose spiritual discernment that I trust enough to heed. Now, we've got to be real careful there because sometimes we rely on somebody else's discernment rather than our own. God doesn't have to speak to someone else to speak to you. There are times he does. But I'm going to tell you, most of the time, he's going to speak directly to you. Most of the time, it's going to come through, through the spirit that you have of his in you. Now, God will use authorities in your life like your pastor and others that will help confirm Amen. Because sometimes, and I've, I've said this many, many times, that when someone comes to me and tells me, this is what I feel God told me, I'm not going to argue with you whether that was God or not. Because <laughs> if you're convinced it was God, I mean, who am I to say? But what I am going to say, if, if God told you to do something that's contradictory to his word, I'm going to tell you that probably wasn't God. Or if God told you to do something that, that, that kind of is, is it not fit in the whole picture like it, like it probably should, I, I may I may advise in those areas, but I'm, I'll never say, "Well, that wasn't God," because I do believe God can and does speak to us. But we got to have again ears to hear, Amen. A heart to be uh, available to believe and to trust Him, Amen. When it comes to spiritual warfare, um, it, again, I, I don't. I heard I heard this the other day, and. Uh, Get exactly how it said, but we sh we should not make spiritual warfare, spiritual discernment weird. Amen. But we we tend to, and I say we as in general, people in general, a lot of times these the people that that operate in a, in the spiritual in, in like in the gifts of the spirit, we shouldn't make it weird. It, it's not weird. I will tell you something, friend. This is this is real, not weird. God, God chooses to use us how he, how he chooses to use us. But I, more than anything else, I guess my, my advice to convey to each of us here this morning, it's not that I, that I, I mean, if I never, my wife, she gets, she's the one that gets the dream. I don't, I don't, I have weird dreams. Just, they don't make no sense. I woke up the other morning, and in my dream, I dreamed I had bed bugs. I woke up, my, I mean, I was itching, and it was so real, like, I mean, I actually got up, and I'm looking, there's no bed bugs, like, why do I dream that, you think, well, you, you, you run a cleaning company, but we've not dealt with bed bugs, I don't know where that came from, I'm starting to scratch now, just, the, so I, those are the kind of dreams, I, I don't, but my wife will wake up, and she had a dream the other day, a couple weeks ago, and, and God gave her a number, and we're still not sure what this number's about. But she's like, Jeff, I know it was God. Okay. I, 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 she's that person that, that I'm going to listen to her discernment. She has proven. And so I don't get those kind of dreams. Uh, and, I, and that's fine, but at but the, the very same time, Lord, I'm open to it. And if God gives me a dream tonight, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept it. I'm gonna, but again, God chooses how he wants. But I want to make sure that this vessel right here is 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 in tune with with him i want my heart to be ready 
because I know there's a spiritual world out there and we wrestle not against flesh and blood I know that and there are spiritual wickedness and darkness and I'm telling you there there's a structure in this region that 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 is operating it is just as real as the nose is on your face but it's sometimes hard to discern and I think the reason it can be so difficult is we got way more flesh amen than what than what we need when it comes to really be able to discern and to see and understand again we're just hitting the high points here on this deaf and dumb spirit Uh, so if you have a lot of accidents again I'm not saying blame it all on the devil but be aware acknowledge potentially this this could be and then more than anything direct your prayers toward God I'm going to bind that spirit today I want to lose God your spirit of protection your spirit of of strength your your, the spirit of peace next week we're going to cover I'm not one of one of the most important and that is the spirit of fear um fear is powerful just as much as faith is powerful in when it comes to things of god fear is to the opposite of that and so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna kind of dive there a little deeper than we have but just to keep in mind god i i I do not want to be controlled or influenced by the spirit of fear amen because he's not given us a spirit of fear right amen of power and love and a sound mind let's stand